tonight at 5. Not in my backyard. I really hope that Park Hill neighbors can hear me authentically saying that we want to be good neighbors. A homeless campsite is supposed to open at a Park Hill church in less than a month. Tonight, neighbors are suing to shut it down. Plus, the Colorado Convention Center is holding conventions again. It's really exciting being able to be back in our normal atmosphere, somewhat normal atmosphere. How a youth volleyball tournament is a pivotal point in Colorado's rebound. And the warning signs here in Colorado that may have prevented a murder 8,000 miles away. 32-year-old Jason Balzer wasn't supposed to be in Thailand. He was supposed to be here in Colorado on probation. But Thai police say he was in Thailand this week. Balzer reportedly admitted he stabbed his pregnant wife to death before throwing her body in a trash can. He is facing a murder charge in Thailand. As Denver 7's Russell Haythorn discovered, Balzer has a history of domestic violence charges here in Colorado, but none landed him behind bars. Yeah, Jason Matthew Balzer was running from the law here in Colorado, and now he could be facing the death penalty in Thailand. He's accused of murdering his wife, who was three months pregnant. Video shows the moments police in Thailand arrested Balzer yesterday. Thailand police say Balzer confessed to stabbing his wife, 32-year-old Pichaporn Kidjob, who was from Thailand. Police say he confessed to dumping her body in a trash bin, taping it up, and then pushing it down a ravine with heavy vegetation. Balzer fled from the small town of Naan in northern Thailand and was arrested 100 miles away in the northern city of Chiang Mi, where he was hiding out with friends. Balzer has a history of domestic violence charges here in Colorado. He married Kidjob in 2017 and in 2019 was charged with attempted murder in Boulder County, but took a plea deal for misdemeanor assault. Then this past December, while on probation, the Meade Police Department found 72 firearms in Balzer's vehicle during a traffic stop. Meade Police later conducted a search warrant of a storage unit owned by Balzer and found seven more firearms. 79 total, including rifles, shotguns, and pistols. He was scheduled to appear in court in Weld County in July. Balzer told Thailand police he didn't know his wife was three months pregnant and stabbed her this past Sunday in a fit of rage. Police say Balzer admitted that his wife was unhappy and she wanted him to move back to the U.S. Thailand is one of only 58 countries that retains the death penalty. The last execution there was in 2018. In the newsroom, I'm Russell Haythorn. The district attorney's office in Boulder County, where Balzer was on probation for a 2019 assault case, told us they tried to have his probation, probation revoked after the weapons arrest you just heard about. In a statement, they said, this murder highlights the danger of domestic violence. Our hearts go out to the victim's loved ones. It is a very tragic case. According to reports surrounding Balzer's 2019 arrest, he pointed a gun at his wife and fired a shot that just missed her head. Responding officers found fresh drywall on the ceiling and bullet damage in the kitchen and bedroom. Experts tell us the red flags are rarely as obvious as they appear to have been in the case of Jason Balzer. Domestic violence or, or intimate partner abuse really is about one person trying to control the other from um, verbal control and verbal threats, uh, intimidation, um, control of finances as a way to control choices that one partner might have. The National Domestic Violence Hotline is available 24-7 if you know someone who might need help. There are also plenty of local resources like the Rose Andam Center. And Brian Mason, the DA from Broomfield and Adams County, is taking the fight against domestic violence one step further, creating a special victims unit specifically for domestic violence cases. Sometimes victims of sexual assault and domestic violence don't actually want to testify in court or don't want their cases to proceed to full prosecution. And then they sometimes, in fact, often, particularly in domestic violence situations, go back to their abusers. And so we want to help get them out, uh, and get them safe, get them the services they need. Mason says he hopes to create a family justice center. It would give victims one location to access attorneys, victim advocates, others who can help them with family law and child support, social services, and other resources they need. 
Monday will mark one year since Suzanne Morphew disappeared. Her sister spoke to ABC News today for the first time since Suzanne's husband, Barry, was arrested and charged with her murder. Barry Morphew has the full weight of the authorities and the law coming against him. And if he has any kind of sense at all, and he loves his girls at all, I hope he'll do the right thing and confess and save us all more heartache. Melinda Mormon said the journey towards justice is only beginning. Barry is being held without bond. He is still allowed to communicate with his two daughters who have lived with him since Suzanne's disappearance. Melinda had this message for the girls today. You are the heart and soul of your mother, and I love you girls, and I pray for you often. Police have not found Suzanne Morphew's body. Investigators haven't made it clear what specific evidence they have to arrest Barry Morphew for her murder. He is due back in court in three weeks. Part of Denver's plan to fight homelessness is to open safe outdoor spaces for people to camp out. One church signed up to help and is now facing a legal fight from their neighbors. The campsite is supposed to open in a few weeks, and right now, the city doesn't have a backup plan. Here's Denver 7's Liz Gillardi. An empty church parking lot is now in the middle of a lawsuit. It's supposed to be the site of a new safe outdoor space, a place that would provide shelter for people living on the streets. Somewhere around here will be the beginning of the fence line. We talked with Park Hill United Methodist Church back in April. Now, two months later, a group of neighbors are suing. It was not our intent to disregard the community. It just came out before we were ready. We felt that we needed to tell our church first. Neighbors continue to be frustrated about a lack of communication, and they're worried about how the site will be managed. A recent motion filed in court says the proposed site has not met the requirements set out by the city, poses a real danger to minors and school-aged children, and does not address the impact it will have on the neighborhood. The site would be modeled after this safe outdoor space at the Denver community community church that's also managed by the Colorado Village Collaborative. That group said in a statement, these are precisely the kinds of well-funded arguments we've heard before. Regardless of their intention, the plaintiffs have not deterred us. The mayor's office also weighed in, saying we understand the concerns, fears, and questions raised by residents and will continue to partner with the Colorado Village Collaborative to address them. And the city added it proudly stands with that organization and their efforts. Liz Gillardi, Denver 7. Officials in North Glen, Glen trying to figure out what caused this large fire in uh, North Glen today. It happened at a home near 104th and Federal. Nobody was home at the time. However, one dog did die in the fire. <laughs> This week, for the first time in more than a year, the Colorado Convention Center is hosting an event. The Colorado Crossroads Tournament brings youth volleyball players from across the U.S. to Colorado. This event was cut short last March when pandemic-related closures took effect. Usually a volleyball tournament wouldn't make the evening news. In this case, it is an important symbol of Colorado's economic rebound. This is going to help our hotels, our restaurants, our community. Uh, having people uh, downtown, of course, socially distanced, spending their money is always a good thing. Having, you know, 10,000 uh, visitors this weekend and 10,000 next weekend really is a sign that we're back. Absolutely. Today's jobs report shows a bit of a stumble in our overall economic rebound. The federal government expected our economy to add a million new jobs in April. Instead, we added a quarter million and the unemployment rate went up slightly to 6.1 percent. Honestly, today's report is probably one of the most disappointing jobs reports of all time compared to expectations. This report reinforces the real truth. For years, working people and middle class people the people who built this country have been left out in the cold. I said Biden is pitching his multi-trillion dollar education and infrastructure plan as a solution to the problem. Republicans say his ideas are just too expensive. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said today the focus should be on women. 4.2 million women dropped out of the workforce at the height of the pandemic. Today, many have given up on finding a job to focus on family. The Colorado public option is a step closer to becoming reality. The state house approved the bill early this morning after 10 hours of debate. The legislation is designed to lower health insurance premiums for small groups and individual markets. So it now heads to the state Senate for consideration. It's been really warm out there for today, but there's colder weather, rain, and even snow in the seven-day. 
Plus, Denver Public Schools names a diverse list of candidates for its open superintendent position. And Denver 7 viewers go above and beyond for a family who came to Colorado for medical care only to lose the truck they drove here. I don't even know what to say. Like, it's just, it means the world that everyone would drop what they're doing and help us.